Hey everyone, I just want to thank everybody before the video today so, 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 so very much for all the support this year. I know I said it in the previous video, but I just want to thank every single one of you guys for all the support and it's just been overwhelming. Thank you guys again. And let's get straight into the video you guys all want. The third part in our Philidor series. Let's get straight into it. All right, all right, all right. So you guys have been asking for it. And today we'll be showing another variation that I think I forgot to tell you guys in the previous video. Now I know I did say I was gonna teach the H3 variation very soon and that video is coming up, don't you guys worry. But today I realized there's a much more pressing issue, something that you could lose to immediately if you guys don't actually know what to do. And that variation is after e4, d6, pawn d4, knight f6, knight c3, knight bd7, knight f3, this looks all very normal and everything. And after e5, bishop c4, and bishop e7, there is this variation that I haven't talked to you guys about, and that's this knight g5 variation. And this knight g5 variation is actually pretty skip, spooky and scary. Now you might be thinking, can black just castle here? And if you thought about this, that's absolutely correct. But here, white has this um, pretty interesting tactic, which in reality doesn't actually work out for him. But... Um, if we are to make any small mistakes with black, white can get a huge advantage. And what is that variation? It's this bishop takes f7 variation. Now I know you guys may be wondering, Sean, don't you always say that two pieces are better than a rook? And the answer is most definitely yes. If your opponent decides to just, you know, just capture both ways over here, I'm not sure if you guys can see the evaluation, but as you guys can see in the evaluation, let me just let you guys see it. It's already negative 1.34. And that's already much, much better for black. So obviously that's not the case. That's not the variation I'm trying to look for today. So what is the variation I'm trying to look at today then? So my the variation I'm trying to look at is instead of bishop takes f7 check, well, it is bishop takes f7 check, but instead of taking the rook, which is kind of silly, white's well, going to play knight e6. And this has to deal with our light square weaknesses that our opponent just sacrificed the bishop for. They're attacking our um, queen over here, and that's very, 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 very annoying. So there's only really one move you can really make here if you don't want to lose the queen, which is queen e8, and now you see the purpose of this move. Knight takes c7, queen back to d8, and knight takes a8. And in this position, we're actually down to four points as early as move eight. In most positions, that would be completely lost. Now, before you guys say, Sean, you taught me a terrible opening, garbage opening. You should have taught me something normal like a Sicilian. Sean, you've scammed me. You know, before you guys do that, I want you guys to take a look at the evaluation. Even though this position looks pretty garbage for black, even though this position, you're super down material and looks like there's no compensation, I just want you guys to take a look here just in case you guys don't believe me. It's slightly better for black actually. And even though this doesn't look like too big of an advantage, it's actually pretty big considering how white usually has a huge advantage in the early openings. So why is this good for black? Well, the thing is, in this variation over here, what's very important to know is that um, you have to play one move in this position, and after you play that one move, the rest should be very simple. I just want you guys to remember, after your opponent takes knight on a, the rook on a, play pawn b5. And now your opponent is in a very complicated um, and interesting position. So, I want you guys to think for a second. Um... After pawn b5, your opponent is in a dilemma. He can do a couple of things, but no matter what he does, it actually leads to a pretty good position for black. And any small misstep, all of a sudden, is just completely winning for um, the black pieces. So let's go to the first variation here. The first variation I want to look at is this knight takes b5 variation, because it looks the most simple. Now, why are we playing pawn b5? Well, pawn b5 is one of those tempo gaining moves. So what is a tempo? A tempo is a move that basically gains time, right? So in this position, we can potentially pay pawn b4 in the future, which gets rid of this knight on this very nice square in c3 and also allows us to take on e4. But more importantly, as you guys probably guessed already, this allows our bishop to either go to a6 and b7, which it can go to both in many different variations, and then allow us to take this knight on a8 over here. So we trade off two minor pieces for a rook. One piece of advice that I want you guys to remember though, is even though you could just play like bishop b7 the very next move and take the knight, the knight's not going anywhere. So don't be in a rush to take this knight. It literally cannot go anywhere and it's very hard for your opponent to send in support. So let's say your opponent takes here. Well, the most obvious move is just queen check over here, right? 
saying, hey, if you want to give me the knight, I'll take the knight. So the knight has to go back, and now because the knight is pinned, hopefully you guys see this very strong move, this knight takes e4 move. And now your opponent's kind of in a little bit of trouble, because you're threatening to take here, you're threatening to take here, and there's only one move that blocks them both. So that move is castle. Well, it doesn't actually block here, but then your opponent has to find this queen e1 move. And after this queen e1 move, you can just take here, support your knight, play bishop e7, and in this position, if you guys um, can imagine, Look how active our double bishops are. Our rook is also in the game. The knight has a nice square. It can go on e5 or c5. Queen's pretty active. Can swing over here. And this position is already just completely better for black. If we were to check the evaluation, I'm not going to show you guys. But it's already negative 2 for black. And this position is very easy to play as black because your piece is all developed. But white has no development whatsoever. And as you guys can see, we didn't really take advantage of this knight. It's not like the knight can actually be useful. Something that a lot of people don't notice is just because you have material doesn't mean that it's actually good material, right? Look at this rook. Is it doing anything? No. Bishop's not doing anything. Rook's not doing anything. Knight's not doing anything, right? So he's basically down like um, 16 points here. Two rooks and a bishop and a knight. Well, we have all our pieces in the game and life is very good. And so knight takes b5 is probably the most um, um, common uh, variation your opponent will play because there's not really much else they can, they can play. Let's say they decide to capture here. If they decide to capture on e5, it's actually very simple. You just take back with a knight, right? And this knight is very strong in e5 in these positions. And they can always plop over to c4. And these positions are very strong. Now, you might wonder, oh, can't your opponent just play something like, um, sorry. Can't your opponent just play something like pawn f4? It is, isn't this very annoying for you? And the answer is, yeah, it could be a little bit annoying, yes. Um, this does attack our knight, but one of the things you can do in this position is just play the knight back. It's not like your opponent can push here anytime soon, and your bishop b7 is coming in very clutch, very soon. And so your position will be very strong in this position over here. So, after knight takes c7, eight, uh, knight takes here, I personally believe the best move is either pawn a3 and pawn f3. And after these variations, it's not like you're completely, uh, it's not like your opponent's out of the, uh, out of the, hmm. Out of the deep end? Uh, out of the deep end, sure. Now let's say he plays pawn a3. What do we play in this position? Well, there's a couple variations you can play here. The most simple one is just bishop b7 saying, hey, I'm going to take the knight back, and I'm going to take e4. But the variation I uh, recommend is bishop a6. And bishop a6 is a little bit of a tricky move because it's basically telling your opponent, hey, if you castle, I'm, I can play pawn b4 and just, you know, win the rook over here. So your opponent might be obliged, they might play a very silly move here like pawn b4. And pawn b4 is not a very good move as you guys can tell because we can just take on a8. And once we take on a8, well, what's your opponent going to do? Is he going to play pawn d5? He might, but if he takes on uh, d5, guess what? Sure, our bishop's blocked, but we can easily bring it back. And we got our two minor pieces for the rook. As you guys all know, these positions are definitely much better for black. So you don't really have to be worried about that. So instead, after pawn a3, our opponent really only has one good move here, which surprisingly isn't castle, because after castle, we can always take on a8 and then play this b4 move. In fact, we can play this b4 move immediately and just take advantage of the rook and take the knight as well. So the only good move here is really bishop e3, saying I'm going to defend this pawn on d4, as well as maybe threatening to castle queenside. So this position is relatively equal, and there's a couple moves you can play, the simplest just being, of course, taking the knight back. So after taking this knight back, the f3 variation transposes, so after pawn f3, you can just play many different moves, but I personally prefer this knight b6 move saying, hey, this c4 square is very weak, I'm just going to plop my knight over here, what you're going to do about that? And as you guys can already tell, once we get the knight back, well, these positions are very easy to play, right? You have two minor pieces for the rook, black is always slightly better. So I don't think there's actually anything else you really need to look out for, right? Like, for example, if your opponent decides to castle here, this is completely fine. We just play bishop b7, saying I'll take on e4, and your knight's still trapped. So what are you going to do about that? And if they play f3, again, this is just the same variations that you can play. b4, queen takes a8, very simple chess. So um, the other thing that I want to, uh, to look at is instead of playing knight g5 first, your opponent can actually take on f7 first and go for this similar idea, in which they play knight here, queen e8, take on c7. Now in this position, because your rook isn't on f7, the queen can actually go onto this g6 square, which is very strong. And after knight takes on a8, you can take on g2, and you actually set up a very, very, very deadly trap here. 
and the trap is after rook f1, you just take on e4. And now your opponent's kind of confused, right? There's only one good move here, which is queen captures here, but after queen captures, you have this very nice knight e5 move. And there's only one move in this position that does not lose the game. I want you guys to pause your videos and actually think, if you were on the white side here, what would you play? What would you play? It's a little bit complicated, right? Um, how would you defend against your opponent's threats? And there's more than one threat. For example, there's bishop a6, which tries to win the rook here. There's knight f3 check trying to win the queen here. And you might be asking, well, then I won't take on d4. Well, if you don't take on d4, this is actually even better for us. Because let's say you play like knight d5, you just win the knight over here. And that's just completely winning. If you decide to move the knight back to e2, well, knight e5 still completely wins. You didn't stop anything. We can also take on e4 as well. So after queen takes d4, what do you play here is white? And so a lot of you guys might be thinking, oh, um, after knight e5, you might just think to yourself, hey, I'll just play pawn f4. Just say, hey, this knight is being attacked. But this position is actually just a um, forced loss here. And I want you guys to pause your video. Again, think about what you would play here from black. One nice move is here. And if you guys really think about it, it's actually quite simple. One move here is the simplest move, and it's this knight fg4 move. This knight fg4's move is a killer, right? And the idea is, well, you're playing bishop h4 check, and your opponent's rook is going to be hanging. So your opponent might give in a little check here, but after he gives in the little check, just block with a knight. And if you block with a knight here, your threat is still here, you're still up a knight. And so if your opponent captures this knight over here, you just play bishop h4 check. And this position, I've never seen a plus 21 position for a side, so this is minus neg negative 21 here for black. Because guess what? Your opponent's king has to move, you capture the rook, and now there's a mate in two. So after your opponent plays king d2, can you guys find the mate in two? There's a cool one and a not so cool one. So let's see if you guys can find the cool one. So if you guys weren't cool, you guys would play something like bishop g5 check, and after your opponent blocks with the queen, you take here. Not so cool. The variation I really like is this one. It's like you uh, cut your opponent with the sword here, the opponent has to move back here, and you just slice them over here with this discovered attack, and this is checkmate. So, today we looked at two very spooky variations, and they're called the early knight g5 variations. I don't know what they're actually called, but both of them, even though they look scary, they're not that good. Just like the variations I showed you before. Why f4 isn't the, really an anti philidor variation, and why the normal variations isn't that scary for black as well. So the next video I'll be doing on the philidor is going to be on what I consider probably the best variation you can play as white. But you, got, but you guys probably won't see it when you're playing on the black side because the only player I've only played again is it, that it has played against that has played it is an international master, and even then I got a pretty good position against them. So don't you guys you guys don't have to worry about anybody studying your philidor. Over my years of chess, nobody is, even knows what this opening is, even the strongest opponents. So if you guys enjoyed this video, press that like and subscribe button. Thank you again for all the support you've given me. I just want to thank every single one of the one of you guys, and I will see you guys in the next video.